Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. On today's show, we are talking about the nonsensical CBC journalistic standards. Also, that interview with Pierre Polyev and the Apple out in British Columbia. That and much, much more to talk about this is Rachel Thomas, the Member of Parliament for Lethbridge, also the critic for Heritage. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jamie. Good to be with you. All right. Let's talk about your motion, talking about the CBC when they were debating or covering, if you will, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, conflict in Israel right now when, when mm -hmm. Hamas went over the border and started to, very sadly and, mm -hmm. and horrifying, mm -hmm. uh, killing people, torturing, all of that. Um, there was a directive going out to the reporters, the journalists from on high at the CBC saying you cannot mention terrorism and Hamas in the same sentence. Tell mm -hmm. us a bit about that. You put a motion at committee. Yeah, to, for sure. So what, what, yeah. So what, what ended up happening was there was a leaked memo and this memo was from the, uh, the director of journalistic standards at the CBC and he had instructed the staff there to make sure that they didn't use the word terrorist when they described Hamas. Um, and, and of course, you know, I, I caught wind of this, as did a few Canadians, and, and was very alarmed by this. Because here's the thing. Hamas is listed by Canada, officially, mm -hmm. as a terrorist organization. And so if the CBC is not willing to call them terrorists, that's a problem. Because they are then disagreeing with the government of Canada and a long-standing definition that we have had for over 20 years years. And again, that's that's official. It's not something up for debate. It's not a matter of opinion. It's 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 determined. Um, and when the CBC was called to task on this, uh, they said, well, the reason why this is their journalistic standard is because they don't want to take sides. And to call Hamas terrorists would be to take sides. For me, this raises the question, if you're if you're not on the side of the innocent and against terrorists, whose side are you on? And how problematic is that then for a public broadcaster to find themselves on that other side? I mean, by failing to declare that Hamas is in fact a terrorist organization is to automatically then side with them. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem when, when we're watching as Hamas entered into Gaza and took out 1,400 people in an evening. They took women and they raped them and murdered them and paraded their naked bodies through the streets. They took four, 40 babies and beheaded them. Yeah. I, I mean, we're talking about a massive massacre. Yeah. And, and you're not willing to call those acts terrorists terrorism you're not you're not going to call that group who 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 committed those acts of violence terrorists it, it just I, honestly I I don't even have words for that like I I just was so shocked yeah. as were many Canadians and I think very alarmed to know that Canadian dollars taxpayer dollars are paying for that type of lopsided news coverage for that type mm -hmm. of direction to be given to those who work at the CBC. Um, I, I think Canadians deserve a whole lot better. So all that to say, you know, as the as the critic for Heritage, as the shadow minister, I brought forward a motion at the committee along with Melissa Lansman. Uh, she officially moved it. And together we, we contended for a study having to do with the CBC and their journalistic standards and whether or not they were appropriate. Uh, unfortunately, you know, at the end of the day, the Liberals... Um, voted to, to suspend it, uh, which means effectively they're, they're killing debate. Um, and so they're not wanting to have the conversation. They're not wanting to look into um, this issue with regard to the CBC and, and the journalistic standards that exist there. Yeah, to that point, like journalism is, the trust in journalism, unfortunately, is at a, at a pretty yeah. pretty historic low. I'm a former journalist, uh, yeah. you know, I admit that. Um, but at the same <laughs> time, uh, when, when you're putting restrictions on what journalists can and can't do and what words they can or can't say, um, to me, that's pretty po problematic. So like any art, journalism, I would say, is an art as well because, you, you know, yeah. you have to be a wizard of words sometimes. Um, 
at that point, you, you, you really narrow down, and, but also put that kind of thought in the journalist's head about how their coverage could be measured, I guess. If, mm-hmm. you, you know, you, you can't put those guidelines on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the problem that, as conservatives, we have with the way the CBC operates. Uh, so it's a public broadcaster. They take about $1.2 billion from taxpayers every year in order to run their, their news coverage. Uh, and, you know, and, and we see that the journalists who work there are given these very clear marching orders in terms of the things that they get to cover and the way that they need to cover them. As conservatives, we believe that journalists should be entrusted as professionals Mm -hmm. to take on the stories that they believe are worth telling and and to pursue them from a a nonpartisan angle, from Mm -hmm. an unbiased angle, to the best extent possible, a neutral grounding point. Um, And we just don't see that from the CBC. We just don't. And so that being the case, as conservatives, we would very much say the CBC needs to be set free. They need to be set free. Set them free from public dollars and therefore set them free from all of the, the, incum- the, 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 the cumbersome guidelines, if you will, or standards, as you know, some might say. Uh, set, set journalists free from that. Allow them to provide Canadians with real stories, real news from real people. And I think if we were able to get away from partisanship, if we were able to get away from, you know, dictatorial (laughs) editors, uh, we would be able to restore some trust in the Canadian public. And I think that we've always been trying to get away from the government controlling any kind of media. We saw the government come in now with new kinds of censorship legislation. We'll get to that in a moment. But at the same time, uh, you know, if the government is controlling the the pay pay stub, the paycheck... yes. It, it's always, well, I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me sometimes, <laughs> right? And especially mm-hmm. with these liberals, they can be extremely vindictive when they want to be. And, and uh, you know, trying to make that balance, it, it's hard to make, especially when you're supposed to be checking the government as a, as a journalist. Well, that's just it, right? So, the, you know, journalists are meant to be kind of the watchdog of the nation, right? They're meant to expose stories that perhaps, you know, we we as politicians maybe wouldn't want them to expose. Well, that's their job. Their job is to hold us to account. Their job is to make sure that the Canadian public is aware of the decisions that are being made, the things that are going on here on Parliament Hill and, of course, across the country. Um, and But when, you know, when the CBC, you know, kowtows to the government of the day, uh, that's a problem. Problem, right? Mm-hmm. And so then, of course, we're seeing this scenario where Canadians are putting less and less faith in the media and are, are simply just reporting that they're not able to trust the, the news that they're hearing. Well, when we talk about trust, let's talk about the censorship legislation. All right. <laughs> we have a very real situation coming on. I know you and others were very forceful, and we had you on the show previously to talk about this, but it was the result of these pieces of legislation, if passed, would happen on local media. And I know myself, I go to local media, look for a story, and mm-hmm. especially on Facebook or something like that, it says this page cannot be displayed. Totally. Right? This was a yeah. revenue stream for local media to tell local stories, and the government just wiped that off the map. Yeah. So I, it's interesting because, you know, over the last number of months, I've received dozens of text messages and emails from folks who are, you know, taking a screenshot on their yeah. their phone or their device and sending it my way where it's showing, you know, this is the news outlet that they're trying to see, but then, you know, it says blocked, cannot display Canadian content because of Bill C-18. This is, this is real. This is happening. The government, you know, put this policy in place, uh, you know, that, that would f- force Google and Facebook to pay you know, for news links on, you know, if they were to carry news links, um, or they had to drop news. So they were given an option according to this legislation. And, you know, and so Facebook Meta has determined they are then going to drop it Mm -hmm. because there's no monetary value in carrying news links for them. And so as a business, they're they're no longer going to carry it. Um, Google has indicated that they are going to do the same. And and we can see some of that already happening, though not fully yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're waiting until the entire regulatory framework is in place. Uh, And the government was warned that this would be the case. Um, 
and and expert after expert at, t at committee, both within the House of Commons and at Senate, uh, warned the government, told them, you know, this, this was going to be quite detrimental, that it was terrible public policy. Um, the government you know, it continued and, and ultimately, you know, pushed this legislation through without giving it sober second thought or listening mm -hmm. to the experts who were speaking uh, about its detriments. And unfortunately now, Canadians are the ones that are having to pay the price because they are not able to access the news as they would desire. It is being withheld from them. And, and of course, this is harmful. It's harmful to Canadians. Uh, it's harmful to these news outlets. Um, you know, interestingly enough, the government said that Bill C-18 was all about supporting local news stations <laughs> or, or local newspapers. Um, they're the ones that are going out of business yeah. because of this legislation. They're not being helped by it. Again, I'm, I'm getting, you know, emails, you know, for sure a couple a week of local newspapers that are shutting down yeah. or having to, you know, let go of employees in order to make ends meet. And it's it comes down to this legislation. Yep. It is killing news in Canada. Um, and so the government got it wrong, and I wish that they had the humility to, to walk it back, um, to admit the mistake, and to be able to restore access for Canadians. Um, because ultimately, at the end of the day, this is squarely on their shoulders. I, I think, too, just to mention, it's not, you know, it's, it's not just day-to-day -day access to news that is so important. It, it also can be in the midst of crisis. Yep, absolutely. Right? So we, we saw where there were fires in the Yukon yep. and people wanted to be able to go on Facebook in order to be able to access, you know, kind of those minute by minute or hour by hour updates in terms mm -hmm. of what was going on. Uh, and and they would log on and they would go to look for this information and it wouldn't be available because it was taken down because of Bill C-18. Um, and so they were they were not permitted to view, you know, news content in Canada. Uh, we heard from another guy who, in order to access news, actually, you know, lived, you know, on 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 the Canada-U.S. border or close to, and so in order to access Canadian news, <laughs> drove across yeah. the border, went to the United States, and then accessed from there. So yeah. it's these types of, you know, it's these types of scenarios I think that that are really frustrating to Canadians and and even harmful to them. Um, which again, I would I would urge the government to walk back this terrible legislation. Well, former Heritage Minister Pablo <laughs> Rodriguez, he is something else. I got to tell you, that guy is something else, and and it amazes me that that he, when asked tough questions, it it would give him no physical discomfort to act like he's surprised by what we bring forward. Right. right? right. This is what's going to happen, Minister. What? I've never heard that before. Like it was, <laughs> it was seamless on how he reacts to those questions. Mm -hmm. Like no discomfort whatsoever. And you really have to dig that shovel in deep to be able to come mm -hmm. up with a path that he he believes nothing is going to happen and there's no side effects to this legislation. Yeah, it's interesting, right? I, I think you know one of one of. Uh, one of the things that Pablo is known for is, is you know, for being able to smoothly talk about, you know, pretty much anything and nothing all at the same yeah, he's time. He's a master at that. <laughs> My goodness. Right? And so, and so he does. So he, he's, he's said all sorts of things along this journey. Um, some of them contradictory in nature, you know, other things that just simply don't make sense. Uh, and then some things that are just outright lies. They're just not true. Yeah. Um, again, you know, I would highlight the fact that one of his commitments the entire time or promises to the Canadian people was that Bill C-18 was going to support local news, that it was going to make sure that we had more access, mm -hmm. when in fact we're seeing that's not the case. Again, local news is actually being driven out of business because Bill C-18. Folks are not getting more access, they're getting far less access to the news because of Bill C-18. So again, you know... It, if a mistake is made, walk it back. Walk yeah. it back. It's it's truly that simple, and it's it's not too late. Though soon it is. Soon it will be. Soon it will be. But an interview yeah. that made headlines right around the world was Pierre Polyev's <laughs> master class interview <laughs> with that journalist out in British Columbia. I think what made that was him eating an apple. I think, but it, he wasn't being rude or anything like that. Yeah. But I think what he did was a couple of things, right? Like Pierre to his absolute credit, was calm and yeah. cool, collected, yeah. but also called the journalist on the questions, right? Journalists sometimes couch things in language to protect them from what they're going to ask. Maybe a personal bias, in this case, I'm pretty sure it was, like other people say, or people say, you know, 
you're a horrible person, right? Like, <laughs> he, he couched it. Like, it's not me, it's the people, right? right? I've right. heard, mm-hmm. right? So Pierre, by asking him to reveal where he got his you know, premise he, from, yeah. he couldn't come up with it because he yeah. was showing that personal bias. So, but by accepting it, then going on saying, oh, you know, it's not a page out of Donald Trump, this and that and this, it's, it's accepting that the, the premise was true, which to most people doing an interview, that's what has historically gone on, right? You'd say, oh, I disagree with that, blah, blah, blah. But by even acknowledging it without backup, you create the narrative. And that's how narratives in media begin. Once you lock in, you lock in, right? And Pierre was like, tell me, what page are you talking about? Like, what are we saying that you were able to make that connection? But Mm -hmm. you can't. You can't, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how you took that interview, but I've seen it everywhere around <laughs> you, Australia, UK, you name it, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. no, certainly it's, uh, it's had, you know, I, I think the last time I looked, it, it had been, had over, over 4 million views. Uh, people seem to really be enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And so I think we have to ask ourselves, well, why did people find it so enjoyable? Um, and I think one of the big reasons why is because I think Pierre, you know, embodied two things that are really key to leadership and and that Canadians and I would even say people all over the world are looking for and that is leaders who are going to be both kind Mm -hmm. and courageous Um, you know in that entire clip Pierre was kind yep he didn't lose his cool he wasn't being vindictive he said nothing you know nasty uh, to the journalist Uh, he just Simply ask yeah. clarifying questions. What am questions. I responding to? What am I responding Who to? Who said this? Where what? does that accusation come from? Exactly. What page in Trump's book, right? And so, and so, I think Pierre was able to, you know, able to kind of push back on the journalist and, yeah. and you know, and, and assert himself, but remained very kind in in that process, I, you know. And and I think what that does then, showing that clip and revealing what takes place behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. It, it actually kind of pulls the curtain back for Canadians and allows them to see some of these things that yeah. are going on uh, when the camera is rolling, but don't these things don't necessarily make it onto the evening news, mm-hmm. right? And again, I think Canadians appreciate seeing that. They want to know what is that raw side of things? What is yeah. going on behind the curtain? Um, and so I, you know, I think I think there was a lot of delight there for Canadians to have access to that uh, that dialogue. Um, and of course, not, as you mentioned, not not just Canadians, but uh, you know, even people all over the world. But I, I think you're, you're, you know, just to point out as well, um, you know, there's been a number of studies done with regards to trust in journalism mm-hmm. as well as trust in leaders, and we know that it's at an all-time low. Um, and and you know, a big reason for that is because a lot of assumptions have been made, uh, a lot of presuppositions have been accepted. Um, and also a lot of things have been dictated to people rather than being explained to people. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. and, and I think, you know, and, and, and Canadians are not sure where to put their yeah. faith. Yeah. And so again, you know, Pierre seeking clarity and wanting to make sure that, that facts were laid on the table, um, I think is really important to restoring trust. Um, again, pulling back the curtain and mm-hmm. letting people behind the scenes and to see those things that go on, you know, in a transparent manner, I think, again, is, is really key to helping to restore some trust, um, not only in journalists, but also in leaders. Um, in this case, unfortunately, I, I don't think it restored trust in this particular journalist. <laughs> um, you know, I think it exposed him perhaps for, for, yeah. for what was going on. Yeah. And that is, of course, he was trying to paint uh, Pierre Polyev into a corner. Yep, he was trying um, to create a narrative. Yeah. An yeah, untrue yeah, totally, narrative, totally. but he was trying to paint that. Totally, yeah. exactly. But again, I, I think Canadians really appreciate that. They, they appreciate the transparency that was offered to them. Yeah. Um, and, and again, I think that they really appreciate Pierre's leadership and the fact that he was able to remain both kind, but also courageous. Yeah, I think so too, absolutely. I think we need like a basket of apples somewhere on the set. <laughs> I think maybe a centerpiece or even behind. I, totally, where is our apple? We, <laughs> we need some apples, just to say, you know, A tree, well why done. don't you just grow a whole tree? <laughs> I think I should. All right, we're out of time. We gotta get to question period. Your final thoughts, closing thoughts. Yeah, Jamie, you know what? I think more than anything, you know, the conversation today, of course, has uh, revolved around the media and, uh, and you know, both Canadians' access to it and the trust that we should mm-hmm. be putting into it. I, I think as Conservatives, we're certainly, you know, we, we place great value in news being available to Canadians. 
Uh, we want to make sure that journalists are set free to tell the stories that need to be told uh, from an unbiased angle. Um, a big part of that is setting the CBC free. Um, and, and I think also, you know, in the meantime, uh, a big part of that is, is, you know, Pierre Polyev, our leader, pushing back mm -hmm. and to make sure that, uh, you know, that the narrative is, is not, um, not what biased journalists yes. want it to be, but rather, you know, abiding by the truth. Correct. Because Canadians deserve that. They deserve the truth. Absolutely. I couldn't say it better myself. Yeah. Rachel Thomas, thank you very much. Member of Parliament for Lethbridge, also the critic for Heritage. We appreciate her time. We appreciate yours as well. Please tell your friends. They can download it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify anytime they like. But we do have new content for you every single Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Please, if you're watching this right this second, like, comment, subscribe, and share this program. If you want Pierre Polyev to be the next Prime Minister, we need to get this message out. And as Rachel Thomas just mentioned, probably not a narrative you're hearing in the mainstream media. <laughs> so let the let the ears hear the message, let the eyes see us in action. Also, until next Tuesday, remember, low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the blueprint.